Mario, as we look at uh, cosmology, there are many different um, uh, methodologies which in the uh, last couple of decades have, have transformed cosmology to precision cosmology as opposed to philosophical cosmology. It's remarkable, a remarkable uh, uh, change. Uh, some have looked to fine tuning of various aspects in cosmology as one of the new ways to think about the topic. It's very controversial. Uh, from your experience, uh, how important is fine-tuning in cosmological discovery and explanation? So, one of the places where I think there has been some useful work done on is the value of what we call the cosmological constant. This is this term in the equations that Einstein introduced in 1917 in order to prevent his universe from <laughs> collapsing on itself. Because he wanted a static universe, which That's was right. the, the, the right. philosophy of the time. That's right. Yeah. But, but it, uh, since then, what we discovered is that what this term does, if it is a correct term, is that it actually causes the cosmic expansion to accelerate. Um, this was discovered, and we know that. The question is, why does the cosmological constant have the value that it has? Mm -hmm because that value looks surprising in the sense that the most naive value that we might have think or thought of uh, is off by many, many orders of magnitude from the value we determined. 120, they say. 120 yeah. orders of magnitude, or even if you introduce supersymmetry, mm -hmm. it's still more than 50 orders of magnitude. So it's, this is a large discrepancy. So it's possible that the cosmological constant is one of those constants of nature that is not determined from first principles, but rather is kind of accidental, and that uh, the value it has is the value that it kind of had to have mm -hmm. for galaxies to form, stars to form, and us to be here to ask the question. So that part has been interesting in the sense that Steven Weinberg, another physicist, actually in some sense predicted that the cosmological constant may turn out to be in a certain range which includes the range which we now find it to be. Mm. Uh, and so that is a very strong statement that you know, you're able to actually make some sort of a prediction, even mm. if not of the precise value, at least of some, some range of values. Mm. And, and that for now, I would say, is perhaps the best candidate for a constant of nature that has to do with this type of, of selection. Is the principle itself, though, uh, in cosmology uh, worth pursuing? Could there be other aspects of, of uh, cosmology in which uh, uh, fine-tuning it, it, it would be useful? So, uh, you know, there are some fundamental physics which enter also into cosmology. For example, uh, you know, we know that there is carbon in the universe, and Carbon, among other things, is the basis for life as sure. we know it. Yeah. Uh, so carbon had to form in the universe. Carbon was not there from the beginning of time. Carbon was forged in the nuclear furnaces of stars, at the centers of stars. Yeah. But for carbon to form, it turns out, uh, there had to be some very narrow coincidence between a level of energy of the carbon atom and the level of energy that you get from trying to combine beryllium with helium together. So that is, appears to be fine-tuned. Mm. Now, why it is like this, we're not sure in the sense that it is not very easy to make these calculations fully from first principles. But certainly if that weren't the case, we wouldn't be here to discuss them. Certainly. Uh, what, what about on, on different scales, like on the scale of the solar system? Uh, obviously, uh, we can only live in a very so-called Goldilocks uh, range in the solar system, so where water is liquid, it's not, it's not boiled off too close to the sun, it's not frozen, it's an atmosphere, these kinds of considerations. Right, so the habitable zone, indeed, is this region in orbital radius which is not too hot, not too cold, to allow for liquid water to be on the surface of a rocky planet. Um, and since we think that water was probably essential for the beginning of life, because 
you have to have some sort of a solvent that will allow molecules mm -hmm. to come into contact mm -hmm. to form these long chains that mm -hmm. eventually form mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. You have to be in that habitable zone. Now, having said that, yes, the Earth is in the habitable zone, but we now know that in the Milky Way galaxy, for example, there are billions of Earth-like planets, more or less, that are in the habitable zones of their host stars. So I wouldn't call that part fine-tuning because there are billions such things. So, so that part is not so, uh, so impressive. Um, there are some other aspects of the solar system. For example, the solar system does not have these objects we call super-Earths. These are objects that are, have a mass a few times the mass of the Earth. Most other exoplanetary systems that we have found have super-Earths. Our solar system does not. Is that important for life? I don't know, <laughs> but maybe it is. Mm. And maybe the conditions were such that we would be left without a super-Earth. Mm. I mean, maybe one formed and fell into the sun. Maybe one never formed. But it, it, it's a fact that this distinguishes the solar system from most, I would say, not mm. all, mm. from most other extrasolar uh, planetary systems. Do you, do you think the focus of um, fine-tuning in cosmology is, is uh, uh, problematic in some way? Is it taking people's mind off the, 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 the core scientific method? I don't think it's taking anybody's mind off because I think all physicists that I know, at least, would still rather have an explanation for everything to phenomena from first principles. However, what it does do is it opens the minds to the possibility that maybe some things we cannot explain because they are inexplainable from first principles. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it did open a new possibility and in particular it opened this discussion of the multiverse uh, in the context of which it has become most, um, I would say, active, not mm -hmm. necessarily fruitful yet, but active.